Today you're here for the TEDx Copenhagen Salon event and um, getting to zero with Hannah. I'm going to not say your surname because I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just going to do a little brief description um, on what, TED, what TEDx Copenhagen is, who we are and what we do. Um, so my name is Ben and I'm part of the TEDx Copenhagen community team along with the people that are stood around you when the um, TEDx, the wonderful TEDx Copenhagen attire and um, Andy Yagita is actually one of us as well so that's why she's kind of she's doing like a double agent role today <laughs> as part of One Bowl and, uh, and TEDx Copenhagen. So a um, quick show of hands, have you been to one of these events before? Thank you. Show of hands. <laughs> you say yes if you want to. Okay, um, but I'm assuming you know what TED is. You've seen a TED talk on YouTube, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very recognisable, the big red letters, the TED red. Um, so you will find you, TED actually was started back in the 80s, I believe, and it stands for Technology, Entertainment and Design. Um, so it's actually, the caption is ideas worth spreading. So TED comes along and actually gives people the platform to actually share their ideas. How did the X become part of it though? So this stands for um, X, experience, wait, no? Yeah, I think it is, experience. Um, so basically TEDx, the difference between TED and TEDx, and um, TED is the actual main event. It runs in Vancouver every year, and then TEDx is the franchise, so each actual Anywhere or anyone can actually have a, have a TEDx license. Um, so today is actually TEDx Copenhagen who's, who's got the license for this event. Um, but there are actually other um, sister organisations within Denmark. Um, they've got Fredos Bear, Odense, Aarhus, Albo, and I believe there's another one that's just created and I can't remember who has created it. Um, but we were told it at the last event. Totally forgot. I should probably look that up. Um, but yes, yeah, so today, um, so TEDx Copenhagen actually puts on a, a wide range of different events, and today is a salon event, so it's a little bit more like cosy, hooglit, and more kind of like people more together, and we just do actually just one talk. Um, so Hannah today is going to almost facilitate a, a discussion of some sort, um, but you do also have kind of like the regular TED talks as well. Um, main events, our last one was back in February, we hosted at Brayman Theatre and we had six speakers and as part of those six speakers we kind of, we ran it in a similar format to the way that the main TED is run in Vancouver. But we also do cinema events, um, slightly smaller type talks as well, um, so we actually can play with the idea and use the TEDx Copenhagen brand to come up with different talks and present ideas that are, that are worth spreading. Um, so, so yes, we have some up, we have some upcoming events. Um, they're in the calendar, and it's a bit of a watch this space because there's going to be another big event coming up. But I'd recommend that you have a, you like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, connect on LinkedIn or whatever you do there, and it will be announced. So just keep watching. So they will keep up to date with our event. That's as much as I can share. Um, our sister community, TEDx Aarhus, actually has a big event coming up on the 5th of October. And their topic is going to be re. So it's actually, by the looks of it, anything like reuse, recycle, re, blank. So it's very interesting to see what comes out of the Aarhus event. If you guys are around there, I'd recommend checking them out, checking them out on Facebook. If you're interested, check them out on the social media and you're sure you'll be pointed towards tickets there if you fancy the three hour train up there. Or the Combarder. Um, yeah, so I think that you've heard enough from me. And if you're actually interested more in TED, keep following us on social media, visit our website. You can actually email us at hello at tedxcopenhagen.co. And I'm now going to pass over to Hannah to continue the talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, my, my dog has been in class all day with me, so she's a little... Didn't have enough exercise. 
Um, yeah, first of all, I want to really say thank you for inviting me. When people ask me today what I'm doing, I'm saying, yeah, I'm giving a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I feel really young and I feel, uh, I feel very important to this. So, uh, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do, um, what, I, what kind of like lifestyle I have. Um, I'm going to start by explaining why I do what I do, what I exactly do, and then I'm going to explain how I do it. So yeah, um, for I have two reasons um, for doing what I do, the so-called zero waste lifestyle. Uh, the first one is um, I'm an economist, and as economists, we put numbers on everything, on like our surroundings, our behavior, sometimes even on our thoughts and beliefs. And when you start calculating with resources, it doesn't matter which model you use anymore. It doesn't matter if you're very neoliberal or you're not. If you're doing empirical work, work or theoretical work, or it really doesn't matter. At the end, there's always going to be one result, and that is we use way too many resources. Resources, every one of us in this room. And on a planet with finite resources, that means that when I overconsume, which I'm still doing, I'm taking away resources that my children could have um, and would need to have food and water and everything they need to have a decent life. So when I realized that during my studies, I was like, oh shit, Okay, I really have to change the way I behave and to change the way I, ways I consume. Um, and then this comes the second reason in fact, which like you can see in this picture, I think everyone has seen pictures like this. So it's, I don't know if you can see this bird plastic in the stomach. Uh, so plastic is everywhere, it's like in our soil, on our water, in our food, it's even in our bodies. So I thought reducing the plastic that I consume might be the best place to start. Uh, and from then on, I kind of started reducing everything that I consumed and reducing all the waste I produce. Up to a point, sorry, I'm kind of hidden in the corner. <laughs> um, up to the point to this. Uh, so this is the waste I produced in the last 12 months. Um, and now I'm gonna explain a little bit how I came to this point, because obviously I didn't start from one day to the next to reduce like my waste up to this size. Um, but that doesn't mean that I want to like tell you what to do. It doesn't mean that like, you should be doing the same things I did. This is kind of what worked for me and maybe it'll help you as well. Um, so first thing I did wasn't like directly related to this. I just radically decluttered. So when I moved out of my parents' place, I really felt like I only took the most important things. But then one year later, when I started to get involved with zero waste, I realized I had so many things that I didn't use at all during this one year. So I very drastically gave all of them away, all of them. And my apartment was empty. <laughs> it was so empty. I didn't live with roommates like that. It was really empty. And um, then I just kept doing the same thing every year. Because you know people say everything that you own owns you. And it sounds very traumatic. And I don't know if it's true. But it, with, with what is true is that whatever you own kind of keeps consuming. You know, It uses space. You clean it, uh, use your time, you heat it up in winter. So if you want to like reduce your consumption, you maybe should also like look over the things that you have in your ownership already. So that was my first step. Also because for me it was really hard to keep track of what is leaving my apartment and what's entering it, it without having overview what is in my apartment already. And then the second step was to start collecting my waste without making big changes in my habits. Um, so I just like, collected for, I don't know if it was a week or two, everything that I usually would like throw out right away, just to like look at what is the biggest part of my waste, what is the biggest, the main part of the things that I consume that I'm gonna throw out at the end of the day anyway. Because I thought if I buy something just to throw it out, I might not need it in the first place. Um, I think back then it was mostly like food packaging, like plastic packaging of food. Um, I know like some people order a lot of things online, maybe like that would be the biggest part of their waste, maybe it might be something different. Um, and then that's where I started, because like now I get really upset about food stickers uh, when I buy them accidentally, but back then it wouldn't have made sense to like start with food stickers. And my mom always tells me uh, to breach the, or not to breach, but <laughs> to tell people about the 80-20 rule, which I don't really like because I'm more of like a 100% all in person. Um, but it is true, especially with this, that you can have 80% of the outcome with 20% of the effort. So if you just want to reduce like most of your waste, 
you can do that very easily, and then it might get complicated with like the small things that you don't know how to replace or to reduce. So yeah, that's what I did, and then I kind of came up with a system that I still use uh, before I buy things or before I like consume things. Um, so there are two different systems. One is for like more consumable goods. I always ask myself, do I actually need this? Still today, so after like two years of surveys, I still ask myself before I go to the store, do I actually need the things that I want to buy? For example, like in the beginning, I was like looking, and I know it exists. I was looking for like zero waste uh, cleaning products that you fill up, and I know it's a big thing now, and you can buy them everywhere. But I realized that I actually don't really need any cleaning products. Like in my collective way I live now, we just like use vinegar to clean the whole apartment. It's organic, it's cheap, and it's better for your health, and it works perfectly. Um, um, so yeah, first step always think about: Do I actually need this, or can I reduce it? Um, and then the second step is, can I find it without any packaging so that everything that I pay for, or maybe not pay for, but everything that I like comes to me, um, is actually used and none of it is just bought to be thrown out. And then if I really need it, which like, sometimes happens and there's no way of buying it without waste, for example, a toothbrush, I've never seen a toothbrush that is not packaged. Um, <laughs> So I just buy one that is like made from bamboo and it's packaged with paper and I know the paper is very clean and it's easily recyclable so, um, so I try to like find the most sustainable version of it. Um, yeah, actually in Copenhagen something kind of sneaked in between number one and two which I didn't have before and that is dumpster diving. So um, <laughs> I know in Denmark it's not illegal so a lot of people do it here. And I guess it's a bad thing because it also means that the supermarkets here throw out a lot of stuff. Um, but it's still nice that a lot of people do it. So whenever I feel like, okay, I need something, I should try to look for it. I always try to see if I can like save it kind of from going to waste somewhere. Up to a point that I like message my friends. And so I, like, I'm looking for a candle. Anyone dumpster like a candle here in the last few weeks? And I usually people like, yeah, I got one. I don't know what to do with it. And then I save a candle and I don't have to buy one. I need it. Which you can see in this picture. It's a normal dumpster diving evening. <laughs> and I know that's like not like not everyone likes sticking around in, in trash bins. Um, so I thought I maybe also like we can talk about later when you have questions about like some tips on where to get packaging free things in, in Copenhagen. So like dumpster diving is definitely the, the cheapest version. Then there's food sharing where you don't just like sit have less packaging, you also like save food from going to waste. And then, you know, their supermarkets use a lot of plastic <coughs> in Copenhagen, but then there are like smaller shops with fruits and vegetables everywhere, like Norvest, Nerpo, um, and it's also like made nice to su support smaller businesses. And um, then there's this market, which I don't know, most of you probably know it. It's a bike store that really doesn't have any packaging. It has like rice and lentils, and you bring your own containers. Um, and then, uh, there may be a more creative way of reducing waste, like coming to community kitchens and community restaurants. It's also way more energy efficient to um, to cook for bigger groups of people. Um, or you could, if it's in season, go to apple tree and pick an apple instead of buying it. So there are like a lot of ways, and like different people maybe find solutions that work better for them um, and work better for the budget, depending on how much money you have for which kind of foods. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then there are things that are not consumable, like cosmetics or, or food, but more like clothes or things that I buy for long term, that I need long term. Um, so I always ask myself the same question, do I actually need it? I remember when I was a teenager, I used to like go shopping, it was kind of like a hobby, that you would like go and see if there's something that you like, and then if you like it, you just bought, because for the enjoyment of like buying things. And I don't really do that anymore if I feel like I need something like a blue shirt. And then I think about it for a few days, I usually realize, okay, actually, it's not worth the space. I actually don't really want it. I actually don't really need it. Um, I have for like small things, I have like a three day rule. And I have for like big things, like a three week rule that I think about if I actually need it. And in most cases, I realize I have six square meter room. I don't <laughs> need anything more in it. And if I actually do need it, um, I look around for like people who might already have it and I try to like borrow it from people. Um, also like in my collective we share everything but also 
in my like whole building we have a face <coughs> too where people like share tools. And I think there's also from like the whole area where I live a Facebook group where like people share everything that they have. So that also makes like the other person feel good about owning the thing because they feel like it's being used more. So it's like a win win situation usually. And then I try to like get it for free again. There are like all those tiny sharing spaces, you know, in Copenhagen where people bring stuff that they don't need anymore. It's usually hard to like find something specific that you need, but it's nice to like look around, maybe you find something that you didn't know you wanted. It's kind of like shopping, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, or try to find it secondhand. And just if like all of steps one, two, three didn't work and I really need something, then I try to look for something sustainable to buy. And that kind of brings me to like my main point that I think is very, very important when you go to a talk where people talk about zero waste. Um, and that is that when you go and Google around and you watch TED Talks and you watch other videos on YouTube and you go maybe on Instagram or Pinterest or whatever source you use, or maybe even you buy a book, you see all those fancy pictures of things that you need to buy in order to be zero waste. And that is not the idea of zero waste. It is quite the opposite. It's a bar about like reducing your consumption and not by replacing everything with a more sustainable alternative. Um, so when I went zero waste, the first thing I did was like, look, what do I have? What can I reuse? Not just re replace single use goods. So like, I kept using all my plastic Tupperware, and I I use I like the jars and picture from my grandma's basement, and I still have them. I think I'm probably still gonna have them in 30 years because they're probably gonna last. Maybe they, if I have children, they're gonna use them at some point. Then. Um, I, I used old sheets and um, and um, other fabric that I had at home to to make um, to little cotton bags and use them to go shopping instead of going out and buying very expensive organic fair trade cotton bags. Um, all of those things, like also you can really see it, but I made like from old um, towels. Uh, I made like you know those little pads that you use to remove um, makeup. Um, and I made them and they work perfectly and then I saw them in a shop and like, if you buy them, just like a reusable one, it's crazy how much they cost. But you don't really need any of those things because whenever you consume it uses resources. And especially things that are made to last for a very long time, use a lot of resources to be produced and it's nicer to use the things that you already have. So yeah, I'm not gonna like make a list on things that I replaced how, but I think maybe in the discussion people have questions about I don't know, food things or shampoo or cosmetics or toilet paper or whatever people want to ask about, and then they can ask about that. Um, yes, I'm almost done. I think it's nice to have like more like a conversation instead of me standing here talking. Um, I just want to say one important thing that always comes up in discussions, so I think I'm just going to say it anyway, uh, or say like beforehand. Um, so people often ask me if I think that's what people should do, if people should start reducing single use and it's like the one big thing to solve our big ecological issues. Uh, and obviously no. <laughs> like there's not one big solution to an ecological crisis. It's not going it's vegan and it's neither going zero waste. It's more of like a part of a journey to a more sustainable future. Uh, and I definitely think it can be a part of it, but focusing too much on like just the demand and consumption side uh, would be a big mistake, same mm -hmm. as just <coughs> focusing on like political activism. I think we need kind of all of it together, and I hope no one comes to my talk and is like, okay, this is what, what we're gonna do from now on. Um, I think just I wanna inspire people to maybe do it, but also like think out of the side of the box and think of like other things that we can do. Um, because it kind of all works together um, to like, yeah, find innovative solutions for a better future. So yeah, that was my talk. Um, and now I think, I hope people have a lot of questions so that I don't randomly stand here for 30 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
this work. Okay, so people like that's why I'm like zero waste and not zero waste. Um, but people define like a low waste or zero waste lifestyle differently. Um, also, when I started, I also said I'm going zero waste, but I only cut out all the plastic or the single-use plastic. And then the next step was to reduce the paper. The next step, all the glass and all the aluminium. And now I'm at like no waste at all besides organic waste. But it was like step by step, and at all points of this, I would have designed, have defined it as a zero waste lifestyle. So it's of like how people define it. And usually people say like things that have a recycling rate around 100%, like aluminium or glass or uh, everything is, would be fine. I still try not to, to use this because recycling is just very, needs a lot of energy and always has like a downside. So for example, when you use paper to wrap your food, it's probably going to be too dirty to recycle it afterwards. Like paper has to be very, very clean to be recyclable. Um, and if you cover your food in it, like, it's gonna go like it can. It's biodegradable, but it's not gonna be recycled. If you use glass, it's so heavy, and transporting it from A to B doesn't have a positive effect on our environment. And also, like the microplastic in our groundwater is mostly like disintegration from like car wheels. So like transporting heavy things indirectly causes plastic waste. Um, so I'm really trying not to like use any of it. But in this jar, there's only mixed materials and plastic. So if I sometimes have a crazy day and buy a jar of peanut butter, then I wouldn't put it in here. But I still try not to do it. <laughs> so. Do you mind passing the jar around? Maybe so people can have a what's inside. Yeah, just as in don't just to get an idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, maybe to get an idea of like what actually is left after a twelve months worth of yeah. Uh, yeah. zero waste lifestyle. Um, because I think I I, I know I. I I've been able to ask questions already and I'm going to bring them back up. Um, one of the things I was thinking about while I was telling people at work today about this, um, about the talk we were putting on, um, was simple things like, um, like organic waste, I suppose. Um, so if you're peeling a carrot or the skin on an onion, uh, I'm assuming that goes into the organic waste just as normal uh, and it's not counted as. I, I do produce organic waste. Yes. <laughs> um, but what has been the most, I suppose, difficult, maybe food item or kind of, what, what's what been the most difficult thing to, that you just couldn't, you found it so difficult that you needed it, and all the time it was like it's covered in packaging, or it's made from something, what, what would you? I, I know what my roommates would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am, um, when I just cut out plastic, um, I didn't really struggle with anything, it was fine, especially since it's kind of trendy right now to put everything in jars, so that was really easy, um, especially because I wasn't living in Copenhagen back then, it's kind of harder, but um, that was really easy. The only thing, when I started not using jars anymore, not buying jars anymore, and I really like eating peanut butter. Um, so I was like <laughs> trying to make it myself, which is easy, Do you know, you roast them, you blend them, you eat it, but um, unless market, they only have it with the peel, so my roommates, they know me, like usually when I'm at home, I'm doing whatever I'm doing and I'm peeling peanuts on the site. <laughs> <laughs> and it just takes hours and it's ridiculous. But now I found a shop where they sell them already roasted and salted, so I'm just going to buy them there and blend them. But I still have some left, so I'm still sitting at home peeling my peanuts. <laughs> yeah, but usually, you know, it's, uh, it's usually easy. Um, do you also grow your own food? In a way, like, well, I ate a tomato from my balcony the other week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that really, I, I'm part of a community garden. Yeah. Um, so we have like small things sometimes. Um, and we do have, we try to like, when you dumpster dive like herbs, and we try to like nurse them up. I don't know if you say that, but like, I keep them on our balcony. We have like a lot of tomatoes, some peppers, but I don't know. I don't know if it's worth mentioning. It's like a little bit since it's Denmark. Not a lot of things grow at all. <laughs> Maybe I'll just keep a track of the questions because I saw the hand before. So Anya. Oh. Um, so I'm, I understand there's different definitions of what zero waste means uh, or how people approach that concept. But um, first thing, when I looked at the glass, there was no. Uh, 
what is it, toothbrush packaging in there. <laughs> so pa is paper is yeah. also waste. Okay, so that's, I'm gonna like clarify. Okay, so in there is just like mixed yeah. materials yeah. and plastic. So unrecycled. So everything that is like, I mean, plastic sometimes is recyclable. It's just really hard for like us to know since like recycling rates for like plastic are relatively low in most countries, also in Denmark. Um, so like all the plastics in there and all like mixed materials that I don't know probably usually aren't recyclable. Um, and then paper, like I, I don't go and buy a notebook. Like I try not to use paper, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it in there. For example, the perfect packaging of the toothbrush, I just put it to recycle. Okay. And then my other question, when you say, <coughs> sorry, when you say uh, when you need something first, like before you buy it, you would borrow it or um, you would ask your new net if someone has it for you. Um, if you say like zero waste is one step in like reaching a more sustainable lifestyle, that's not really mass, uh, like it's a lot of mass solution because then if like everyone does it, you can't borrow it anymore and no one else has these things left over, so it's kind of an outsourcing of the ways, maybe? I think, like, I mean, the long-term idea would not to, would be that, like, no one has to buy things and be like, okay, this is mine, but more to have, like, so many more shared things, to have, like, more of, like, a community, community way of organizing things, so that I know, for example, like, I think in a lot of libraries here, you can, like, borrow tools, but people, they don't know it because the first thing is, okay, I need a tool, even if I just need it once in two years, I'm gonna buy it. Instead of being like, oh, there's a library, I can like borrow tools from here. Um, so that that would maybe be a more common thing, that people like share things. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm totally, like I do the same thing, so I, I, it makes sense, but I'm just wondering if as promoting it as a concept of a more sustainable lifestyle, it's not, uh, I think I'm more trying to promote the idea of <coughs> leaving ownership behind, kind of. <laughs> when people get used to being, okay, I'm totally independent in my life, I'm totally fine without owning everything that I might possibly need at some point, then maybe they'll be fine with like having in the future more like broader concepts that include um, yeah, less like individual private ownership. Do you consider that your passion? I guess I guess that takes something a lot of the time of your life, and usually people do spend most of the time of their life for their passion, doing their passion. Um, What's the question? If that's my passion. <laughs> okay. And no, no, it's not. Um, so the first few months, I saw, I would say maybe two months, when I started doing this, was a big thing. And I was constantly talking to everyone because I needed help from like all kind of sources. Uh, but now it's just what I do, and I'm just used to it. And it doesn't take up a lot of time, like besides the peanut butter thing. But <laughs> that's really the only thing that takes up a lot of time in my life. Everything else, I'm used to it. I have my habits. I, um, I have my routines. And um, for example, when I had my last job interview, they also said like, yeah, okay, what's your biggest passion? Biggest passion." And a friend of mine had was like a group interview, and she was actually sitting next to me, and she was like waiting for me to say zero waste. And I was like, I just love cooking. And she's like, what? But it's like I'm not passionate about not reducing waste. It's just what I do, and for me it's just normal. And also standing here talking about it feels so weird because for me it's just I don't know going to the supermarket buying things kind of feels like a long time ago. Um, and it's not yeah, it's not a big thing for me anymore. And it's nothing that like makes me really passionate every day. How long do you live like this? Two years. Two years. Okay, so at the back and then two. <coughs> and how do you manage like going out, for example, like to have dinner? Because like you can never like really know how restaurants like the place manage waste or like you do something about that or it's just. Mm. So like I don't expect everyone around me to when I come over to also be zero waste as well. And I wouldn't never eat at a friend's place, for example, which would be really sad. So also when I go to restaurants, I, I mean, I tell them not to give me straw. I, I try to avoid napkins and things like that, but I still like eat there. I just don't really use, I don't really try not to get takeout food. Since I always produce a lot of waste, or at least I bring my own Tupperware if I can. Okay, so 
But yeah, like yeah, I mean restaurants to throw out a lot of food as well and everything that I I still go out to eat sometimes. Was that your question as well? Yeah, I think that you know food is a big thing in your daily life because biking through the city you easily get hungry and for me personally it takes up quite some time to prep my food and I also try to reuse all the jars and those, the plastic bags and I think that's why it definitely makes a change and it changes your daily routines and maybe it also separates you from people who don't have the same mindset and don't want to be as aware of the consequences of their consumer. Things, yeah, it is a thing that yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then also about the food, I think it's nice that um, you have to good to go with restaurants that at least don't throw out the food then. So, you know, and you could uh, that comes in a lot of food. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like a, uh, to be honest, I've never done it, but <laughs> mm. I know that if it's like a, a buffet, then you can like bring your things and Depends. In some, there's regulations that you have to use theirs to that they would know how much food you're taking away. Because then you can cheat and bring like super big Tupperware. Yeah, but if it's like a small thing and you ask them, I that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a tricky question. Uh, what uh, are your thoughts like, uh, around the new waste and protected, protected sex, uh, especially around sexually transmitted diseases? Um, can you repeat like that everybody would hear? Yes. Or ask so, if you tricky question, uh, the relationship between uh, zero waste and the sexually transmitted uh, disease, for example. Yeah, that's very good. Um, yes. <laughs> um, <coughs> no, I think um, like getting ill or um, having an unwanted pregnancy is definitely not very sustainable, so I think you should <laughs> always have safe sex. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, there are actually like two types of waste that are not in my jar. I, when I started the year, I had like a bigger jar, and then I downsized because I, I thought I didn't need it. Um, and in the beginning, I also put like, if I got sick, my, I, I had like one flu in, in winter, and I put like the antibiotics packaging in there. And I just noticed that I was sick for four weeks before I went to the doctor because I didn't want the packaging in my jar. And I just realized that that's not a healthy thing to do. So I decided like all the medical things are not gonna go in there so that when I'm sick I only think about me being well again and I don't think about my tiny jar. Um, and also like those kind of things. Like condoms are not in there. I think almost opened that question to the floor. What do other people think about that? Yeah. You can give it to the other person. Yeah, jar, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wash it out and then wash it out. <laughs> I have actually seen that um, some articles where this is, that this is a genuine topic to discuss because, um, and how can you make condoms and contraception uh, sustainable? It's yeah. such an interesting. It's such an interesting thing, but ultimately, if we can, ultimately, the biggest consumers are humans ourselves. So, I suppose less children uh, means less consumption. <laughs> so, I think almost, I think a lot of these things with the zero waste stuff. I think there's a lot of, um, in my opinion, you, you take them with a pinch of salt, and um, because ultimately, it's almost kind of you can't be perfect because elements of society don't allow us to be completely perfect when it comes to the zero waste thing and um, it's, it, I know it's a lot with, with um, uh, you know what, if someone labels themselves as zero waste and people almost expect them to be 100% zero waste and ultimately that person has reduced um, what, they, what they are consuming and I think ultimately that's, that's a good thing and that's kind of like my opinion of that um, uh, when it comes to that. Kind of slightly forgot my point now, which is really funny. <laughs> so from this point, yeah. you're going to so one, two, over. three, yeah. right? Okay, can I say yeah. one more thing about? Yeah. Is it two? Oh, is it the same topic? No, no. Okay. Okay. Go on. no I just want. It's interesting, so. <laughs> no, it's just about the the thing. Um, as I think, it's all like we should never like look at one thing in a bubble and get too like caught up in it and. 
especially with like contraception, um, it's also like a feminist issue, and it's very important that everyone feels like they can decide for themselves what is best for them, and shouldn't like feel pressured into using the 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 choice that produces the less waste, the least yeah. waste. So there are so many factors that are very important, in that. and um, so I think yeah, you, I wouldn't. That's also like I have an Instagram account. <laughs> and I don't like talk about this issue being like, okay, so I measured it and this produces the least emissions and this, 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 because I think that's a very intimate topic and I think people should like listen to their body, what they feel is like right for them. Yeah. That was actually my point, as in kind of that, <laughs> more like the, the ballot, that was it. Is I was going to use kind of the phrase, that I've re changed in my mind now, you say like the lesser of two evils, of almost like, ultimately, there's, there can be two things that it's like, Oh, it's going to cause waste, but then I get an unwanted pregnancy. You weigh up the cost, really, <laughs> of that, and you pick the one that's appropriate. Yeah. And you will know yourselves like, in all so in lots of topics in life, as well as zero waste, that ultimately both two choices may have ne are going to both have negative consequences and positive consequences. I think ultimately just everyone here chooses that one that um, actually ultimately that's less negative answer. That was going to be my point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yes. I will, uh, wanted to ask you, how did that influence your, uh, uh, your relationship with people, with old friends, maybe with, you see, now you're in that community, and I guess you spend all of your time with the people in this community, so they are with your friends. Um, but what about the friends you had before, or you still have, of course, but I, I hope you still have a lot. <laughs> it's because I mean, for a personal point of view, I mean, I definitely not at your point, but I'm trying to reduce and follow a plant based uh, diet. And being surrounded by people that then do not agree and they also make you feel different, I mean, makes everything harder. Mm -hmm. So, yes, <laughs> yes, it does. Um, so, when I started, when I started, I was living in a small town, and uh, we had like a zero waste store opening. So it was kind of like a big thing in a small town, and everyone was talking about it. And then I was the first one to be like very radical about it, be like, okay, I'm doing this. And everyone was kind of like carried away with it. So people, um, even people who usually don't be so interested in sustainability, kind of supported my ideas. And then when I went back home to see old friends from school. Everyone was like, yeah, I could never do that, but I've never reached a point where people are like, oh, this doesn't make sense, I, I don't know, can't talk to you about this because it's too much. Compared to like when I went vegan, I had a lot of criticism every time I told anyone, everywhere I went. Even when I was just like, oh, so you're making it? Oh, yeah, you're vegan. But I don't have that with zero waste. People are very open about it. <coughs> people like come to talks about it. Um, it's a very different way of handling the issue. And, I feel like no matter where you go, people support you, so I never really had to, like, had any problems with, like, human relations in that regard. But yes, it's easier when people support you. Also, um, where I lived before, it was just me being zero waste in, like, my first apartment in Copenhagen. I was kind of, I don't know, but I was like, yeah, um, could we, like, maybe not buy all those window cleaners or whatever, I'm going to take care of it. And then the next day, there were, like, three different kinds of window cleaners, and I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you could have waited 24 hours. <laughs> Uh, and now in my new apartment, we have the rule that everything that we share is at least plastic free. And um, then everyone like, does for themselves what it feels right for them. So that makes it way easier, of course. But yeah. what about the relation with these people in the old apartment? They were just people living there. They're, they're not having any relationship anymore with them. The people from the previous apartment? Yeah. No, I do. Like, I'm really close with one of them, and I work with the other one. So. Okay. But they, yeah, they don't. They would never go zero waste. But they, we're still friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I guess when you change your social circles, also changes. Of course, it in, gets influenced uh, a lot, right? But it doesn't mean you have to cut off because it happens sometimes naturally that you maybe don't agree or you don't have even what to talk about, and then you just get distance and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. Anyways, you want to test something? Yeah. Long yeah. Time ago? Looking at your mason jar full of waste. Like it's on display, right? Mm -hmm. And you must have some kind of horror story of something that you bought and you kind of regret it because now you can see it inside the mason jar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the few things that bother me a bit, like I got there are two straws in here, and the first one I got, I was out with some friends, and I was like, yeah, I don't need a straw, and the, uh, and the waitress, she was like, yeah, we don't use straws anyway, yeah, and very, I don't know, she was like talking to, down to me, but, and then my drink came with a straw in it, and I was just, I thought you didn't use straws, uh, yeah, I didn't make the drink. <laughs> and I, was, I was slightly annoyed about it, um, but that, yeah, it wasn't my fault. And then um, the second one was I, I got a tattoo, and you know they they wrap it in like plastic, and there's so many zero wasters online with a lot of tattoos, and I'm sure I could have like messaged them and be like, what did, what did you do? How did you handle that? But I was so excited about the tattoo that I didn't think about it, um, and then I was there, and then I had it, so I couldn't they wrapped it. <laughs> yeah, do the stuff then. So yeah, if I would have gone better, because this fills up like the whole middle. Yeah. It's just a tattoo, so I'm kind of... Yeah. So, was it somewhere here, one of you, or...? I, I, I well, so you did it. Um, I think that, you know, you always get receipts, even sometimes they ask you or they just give it to you anyway. Do you also consider that part of your waste, or do you manage to cut them off or tell them no before it's already printed? I mean, that, yeah, receipts are not recyclable, like, yeah, I know that, um, but they, they're not in here, I just tell them I don't want them, but so, like, most shops already rented them, yeah. I just kind of have, like, the idea that at some point, if no one takes them, they're going to change the law, and they're not going to, like, they're not going to use them anymore, mm -hmm. um, but also, for example, in, like, the Los Market, in the Sioux Waste Store, they ask you if, like, you want it, um, and then, if you need it, then you, like, just take a picture of it on the street, <coughs> that's, that's what you do. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you have questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you just said that it was easier in the place where you lived before to be zero waste than in Copenhagen. What do you find especially difficult here? Mm. Prices. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, in uh, where I lived before was like a smaller town, and we have like big farmers markets every morning from seven till twelve, where you could like talk to the farmers and get like fresh organic not even organic, but like fresh products from like the area, mm -hmm. and it was really cheap. And then here, if you want, I mean, it's not just the packaging, you know, you want it to be local, you want it to be maybe organic, you want it to be seasonal, you know, you wouldn't know where it comes from, uh, then it just gets really pricey. Um, so that was just a little challenging in the beginning, but then, you know, then you find food sharing and community kitchens and community restaurants, so you kind of like manage your way around it. Yeah, final question. No. No. Oh, one, two. Sorry. Oh, we still have 15 minutes. Oh, okay. You max, told me it was max. Max. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So if you have something on your mind, like, just shoot it. One, two. Yeah, yeah so I kind of, maybe I'm missing the meaning, but uh, kind of assume that you hardly ever sell food in a enormous supermarket anymore. Uh, because if you go there, pretty much everything is full of things. So do you have, for all the stuff that you buy, do you kind of have like all these addresses that you go to, you have this shop here that you can get this, and you know this place over there, you can get that. And, but then also, <laughs> like I also really like cooking, and I, and I really like discovering new ingredients or new, new food stuff. Do you, how do you do that? Do you have like places where you can go to, to discover stuff that you, you, you don't know yet, you haven't tried yet? How does that work? Mm, so, I also really love cooking, um, and I used to like cook a lot, like use recipes for it. I don't really do that that much anymore because I'm kind of more on. I see what I can find, and then I look what I can like make out of it. Uh, but they're like, I mean, they're markets, you know, with like fruits and vegetables that you haven't seen before, and then I think it's like a different. It's just a different way of cooking for me now than it was before. I just like see this. Oh, I don't know what it tastes like, and I just take it and then. Uh, so what's it called? So I can Google it, and then I can like look for new recipes. Uh, but also, like, it really dumps it out a lot here. It saves me a lot of money. And then you never know what you're going to find. And it's just, like, you have to, like, try new recipes and try, like, cooking differently because you find what you find, and then you use that. And I, really, I didn't go to supermarkets for a really long time, but since I got a dog, if I, like, forget to, to cook for her sometimes, and then I wake up and I'm like, oh, my dog has to eat. And then I just go to the next supermarket and then I buy, like, unpackaged food, and, but then I food, buy food for her. And if we get inspired by your talk, do you have somewhere where, where we can find some some places in Copenhagen that could be smart to like in the market you talked about before or some other places? Um, maybe, 
I mean, you can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> uh, but we could also maybe yeah, make a list later and then people yeah. could like, send it around. And we can distribute it if you want to, like, through, yeah. through the yeah. attendees page. Or yeah, or like, yeah, just in a Facebook yeah, event. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. can make a list and then yeah. post it on Facebook. <coughs> and then, like, you probably also know places that we can like, maybe share. And, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, related to that, because I was about to ask, because how do you know when the vinegar and yeah. what about the shampoo and all of that stuff? Do you have, like, a blog where you kind of document all these things? Or do we have to scroll through your profile and try and find... Yeah, so my Instagram is just about that. I don't, like, post out these, I think. It's just about what I do, what I reply to how. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I mean, like these kind of tutorials on the different areas of consumption, like how, where do I get it, or how can I make it myself, or like how does it work? Like um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can... You can promise to make a post about this. Yeah, I mean, if you have questions, like, yeah, you can, I don't know if you have been saying otherwise on Facebook, yeah. you can always message me. Um, otherwise, there are a lot of blogs online. I'm not going to say that my signature is going to be the best one. It might just be the easiest one because a lot of people who blog are really spending a lot of time on it, and I okay. try not to spend but a lot so of time on it. So maybe there's a blog you could recommend or something. Mm -hmm. but they, uh, <laughs> there's Neo Hippie. Do you know Neo? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. but yeah. you know she it already? Uh, yeah, she wrote a book about it, a sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. She's also on Instagram. Yeah. 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 Okay, so one, two, three questions. Yeah, it's interesting to know like, uh, what do you do about the, all the other waste that is created um, that's not related to food? So you mentioned toilet paper, but also I don't know, water or you know, electricity consumption. If you don't buy books, I guess you have e-books. I mean, that's a very extreme case, and I know it comes back to the definition of zero waste, but is that within your definition? And, and, um, mm, I mean, toilet paper definitely is, and everything else. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think it's like part of zero waste is like how people define it, but it's still like, if you want to talk about sustainability, it's like a big part of it. Yeah. Um, so I try to, so <laughs> I just stopped like a few months ago um, to use toilet paper. It like took me really long to get there. And most zero wasters, when you like Google it, they're like, yeah, that's the only thing I do. I would never give it up. And I, I, I read that so many times that I was like, it felt so absurd. But actually then I read into it and it's provides way better hygiene washing yourself with like water and sometimes soap. So I just <laughs> finally like took the step to do that. And it makes me a little uncomfortable talking about it, but I think people should talk about it more because it's a Western thing to use toilet paper and we don't need it. I will fight for your body. Hmm? I will fight for your body. <laughs> yeah, so many countries yeah, don't use toilet paper and for us it's just it's like a weird thing to imagine ever living without toilet paper, but it's only possible and it's cheaper and nicer. And okay, so you had like your own towel and like a bit of soap or water or um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And it's made of plastic, so I just didn't want to buy it. But then, like my whole, all my roommates were like wanted to get it as well. So I thought, okay, if we all share it, then it's kind of fine. So we like wash it frequently, but we all share it. And then I have like a tiny bag with like tiny towels, and I only use them for like one day or so, and then I wash them um, really hot. <laughs> <laughs> and water and electricity. Um, yeah, I mean, I try to reduce my consumption. Like, I would never use a dryer or anything. And also books, I, I mean, yes, I use, like, PDFs for, like, giving me and stuff. But if, like, someone else, like, if I find a library, then I'd, like, prefer that over, like, having to use my notebook and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I try not to Google too much, because I know that I use a lot of energy. Thank you. Uh, one, two, and three. Yes. Now, well, coming back to the water and stuff, because I'm Italian, so, but a lot of people say that, like, the washing actually consumes a lot of water, and, uh, yeah. we're kind of the only one in Europe to use, and, uh, So, so can you say last part? No, like, we're kind of the only one in Europe having, like, the video to yeah. wash and stuff, so, but a lot of people fight that it consumes a lot of water. But that was, that was not my question. My okay, question... I'm going to say about, about the first question. <laughs> my question was actually, 
Uh, well, there's an economy, so probably know a lot about it. And how should we redefine really our economy in order? What do you think about how should we redefine really our economy in order to get to a lower waste? Because actually, our economy is based on waste. That's how should we I'm going to say something short to the first part and then I try to be short for the second part. Uh, first part, yes, like you use water, but I think people really underestimate how much water and energy is consumed to produce toilet paper, to bring it to the shop, to bring it to your place, and then to like get rid of it somehow. Uh, it's always going to be more than just washing yourself with a little bit of water. Um, also, like I read, like a comment, you should never read comments underneath videos. But I did. And, um, there was like this. Uh, would be like, yeah, you know those um, reusable or whatever you use to remove your uh, makeup. You have to wash them. It's so unsustainable. I just use cotton ones and then I throw them out. I'm like, cotton? Do you know how people produce cotton? Like, there's nothing on this planet that uses as much water as this. Like, it's like really hard to like. Yeah, everything, you have to wash it. It always uses water, but producing them something and then selling it and transporting it is always going to be, in most cases, it's going to be way more intense. And then the economy thing, yeah, yeah, that <laughs> would be like a new two-hour talk, I guess. And I think, um, I don't think under our current system there's a way of uh, finding a sustainable future. I don't think if we all would go zero waste, there would be a way that under such a, um, growth orientated system uh, we would find a way to sustain this long term um, so I think we definitely need like some kind of bigger system change um, because yeah that, that, I mean this is like a structural problem you know you want to live more sustainable and then like capitalism tells you to buy things to be more sustainable and um, <coughs> you need to put a lot of effort into like questioning that and finding like realizing that that's actually not how it works and that's not possible for most people, and that's not what most people will do. So I think we need to like rethink our whole economy, and instead of like growing when we have productivity gains, maybe like working less, <laughs> things like that, or like redistribute things like that. Um, to yeah, I don't yeah, I think um, we have to like question like question the we have to question the basis of our economy if we want to um, have a future at all. I guess. Yeah. Questions here? Yeah. Can I just before like anybody else has questions in their heads? I have plenty, but I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's agree on this one. That uh, that's the last question, and then I'm gonna tell the people that we are ready to eat in 10, 15 minutes. But you can keep on discussing. I just keep a, I just open a bit of door to let in the fresh air. So you will hear some noise from the kitchen. So. It's because the food is coming, okay? So, last question, and you keep going. <laughs> um, well, um, maybe it's more like a comment to make. I think that one answer to a change in our system could be the, change, um, the sharing economy, to share more of the belongings that we have. Um, of course, then, again, some people earn money on it, and you could argue that still, um, yeah, consumerism and capitalism in that sense, but I think then again you use um, you use your belongings and you share them, um, and some people don't have to yeah buy a tool. There's even an app for that to um, to borrow tools, so you don't have to buy them even if you. I mean, if you only have to drill one hole, you don't have to go about and buy a drilling machine. And, and, um, also about the stuff that is for free, there's another app that's called FreeMe, and everything's for free there, um, also candles, I just wanted to say. <laughs> so, yeah, you also, if you have something that you don't need anymore, you can also, um, yeah, give it away on that app. So that's, that's nice. Yeah. Can you write down, if you are making this list, the name of the app for sharing tools? Yes, sure. Yeah, maybe, yeah, we make a big list for those who don't Okay, so thank you for Hannah, thank you for questions and discussion. So you can keep on sharing your tips and uh, inspirations and stuff like that. And you will get the first meal soon. Okay? That was the worst.
Ah, it's uh, on the right side, upstairs. And there is more uh, tea and coffee, water, and if you fancy wine or beer, there is a glass outside. <laughs>